Hello and welcome to GameSack. This time around we're taking a look at NEC's PCFX, which was the follow-up to the PC Engine. Yeah, and maybe a lot of you haven't heard of this system. I mean, it was only released in Japan. I've heard of it, of course, but I never really knew a lot about it. And since that's the case, maybe our tech geek over here can fill us in on all about the system. All right, let's take a look at the <laughs> PCFX itself. The NEC PCFX. NEC released a CD-based 32-bit PCFX in Japan in December of 1994, shortly after the releases of the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation. This was the follow-up to the wildly successful PC Engine, which is known as the TurboGrafx-16 in the US. It was made to resemble a powerful computer tower with upgradable expansion ports. NEC finally realized that having more than one controller port was a good idea, as would be building an AV and S video jacks. It also came stock with a six-button controller, very similar to the old Duo RX pad. It offered up to seven different background layers capable of doing different things, as well as two sprite layers and over 16 million colors. It even had a layer which could do JPEG video, which NEC heavily banked on to make their new system stand out. Unfortunately, the PCFX was woefully underpowered compared to the Saturn and the PlayStation, offering no 3D capabilities while costing slightly more. This did not bode well for the system, and it was discontinued selling just over 100,000 units. Nice, Joe. Some really good info on the system there, and I think that could have been a really strong 2D powerhouse with its seven layers of background scrolling and whatnot, but... But I think actually the uh, Saturn did better at 2D. I mean, it didn't have quite as many layers, but I think it just was mm -hmm. a better 2D system. Yeah, overall, and this one didn't have the 3D capability of the Saturn and the PlayStation, and supposedly an NEC just said, whatever, we're out. <laughs> yeah. Dropped it. Anyway, let's look at the games that are on this system. We got the first one. Mm -hmm. Which is always the most important part mm -hmm. of the system. So let's just go. Team Innocent is an adventure game by Hudson and also a launch game. Firstly, I've got to say that I really don't care for the title of this game. I understand that it stars three young innocent girls, but dang, the title makes you feel like a Chester the Molester just turning on the power. Naturally, the whole game is in Japanese, and from what I can figure out, you're on a space station gathering information to try and figure out what happened there. I'm sure I'm wrong, but oh well. After a fairly lengthy intro and a lot of talking, you finally start playing the game. The backgrounds are all pre-rendered CG, which look pretty nice. However, your character is a hand-drawn sprite that's wearing what appears to be a standard uniform of a spandex suit with a G-string. Team Innocent? <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, the game controls and plays similar to Resident Evil. Granted, this game came out long before that one did. You wander around looking for clues and items that will help you progress the story. There's a few enemies scattered about that you can fight. Fighting isn't very easy, and it seems you have to time your attacks or you'll die quickly. There's no life bar or anything that lets you know what your health is, so it's hard to know when you're close to dying or not. Yep, I'm close. Damn! There's only three missions here, so overall I think it's probably pretty short. It's an interesting game with some decent music that might actually be pretty fun if I could read the text. Super God Troopers Eroigar is the only shooter on the system. You know, that's kind of odd since the PC Engine had more shooters than any other genre. Oh well. Unfortunately, it's an overhead shooter, which just happens to be my least favorite type, but I don't hate him or anything. As with pretty much all PCFX games, you'll get tons of anime cutscenes explaining the story. You start out as a weak airplane, which can be slightly powered up, but once you get to the boss of Stage 1, you're suddenly playing as a mech, which will last you the rest of the game. This kinda looks like Musha or maybe even Spriggan, but it's a far cry from either of those in my opinion. Sadly, your ship moves way too fast, even on the slowest setting, so you're gonna be running into a lot of things until you get used to it. And even then you're gonna be running into a lot of things because you're huge and there's lots of enemy projectiles. You have a ton of different sub-weapons which you can select through with a menu. Each of these has their own meter and they last a different amount of time depending on how much you fire them. This is also one of the very few games that takes advantage of the mode switch on the PCFX pad. Switch mode 1 to B for automatic continuous fire. You have a life bar and you can take several hits before you die. You can also collect power-ups to beef up your weapons a bit. But what's really interesting is that this game features a leveling up system. You gain experience in the levels and it's tallied up when you win the stage or even when you die. Here it shows me leveling up from 10 to 11, I assume. 
Now how this affects the actual gameplay, I wasn't really able to precisely determine, but you do really level up because I found that once you die and continue and try that stage again, you suddenly seem a little bit more powerful and it's just a little bit easier overall. But the really good news is that when you power up your firepower and anything touches you, your firepower goes down. So I'd really recommend not touching anything, but honestly, I'd recommend that for every shooter ever made. The graphics are pretty good and they have some nice color. It almost looks like a Super Nintendo game visually, except there's way too much stuff on screen and everything is moving around way too fast. Still, it does show off some cool things here and there, like a scaling and rotation effect. The music is pretty good, and I think it's worth ripping to your iPod or Android device. Too bad there's no sound test or Redbook audio tracks. I don't know what all of the different options in the title screen do, but one let me pick different characters to try out Stage 2 with. Another one gave me an alternate version of Stage 1 that faded out for no reason that I could discern as I was fighting the boss. This is obviously a timed caravan mode. To be honest, I absolutely hated this game at first, but after playing it for a while, I grew to moderately enjoy it. But in the grand scheme of shooters, it's really nothing tremendously special. Let's take a look at Boundary Gate, Daughter of Kingdom. It's a first person RPG by Polestar. The game is completely in Japanese and there are no walkthroughs online that I could find so I did the only thing that I could do, wander around aimlessly until I got stuck. This took about 15 or 20 minutes as I was stopped at three different doors and couldn't progress. The good thing is that I think I got a good feel for what the game is like in that short time. You walk around in first person mode. The map in the corner is very helpful. As you can see, the backgrounds in this area all look very similar, and without the map, I would have been completely lost. Just like any other RPG, you talk to people all over from shops to taverns. When you do get into a battle, it's no longer displayed in first person mode, but plays similar to most other JRPGs out there. At least this part I was able to fumble my way through and figure out how to attack and how to heal. I like that after I killed this guy, they show his gooey corpse which was drawn really cool. I think they did a fairly good job with this game in terms of graphics and the way it makes it look like it's scaling. The music here seems to be pretty good and I liked it for what it was worth. It'd be pretty fun to see what happens later in this game as in if you're just confined to towns and dungeons or if you actually get out into the open world to wander around. Battle Heat was one of the launch games for the system. It's a fighting game, but not in the traditional sense. This is more like an FMV game that you'd see on the Sega CD, but perhaps even less controllable. Each side can choose one of four players. That's right, if you want to play as this Belmont looking guy, you need to use controller too. Anyway, you get into the game and you must input fighting commands and then the animation plays out. You have strong and light attacks, a guard, a jump, and special moves. Unfortunately, the timing really sucks and you never know if a move you input is going to work. At first I tried using Street Fighter moves and I definitely recommend not doing that. Instead your attacks are extremely basic, like pressing a direction and an attack button. The computer will almost always counterattack, and since it's pre-rendered animation you have very little time to respond. I was able to win a few matches though. The game looks really cool and the music seems to use the PC Engine sound chip. Still, I really didn't enjoy any time I spent with this one. I mean, who thought a game like this would be a good idea? Well, somebody did because we also have Tengai Maku Katakuri Kakutoden. Well, that's a mouthful. This is pretty much the same game as Battle Heat, but with Tengai Makyo characters instead. Tengai Makyo 2 was the best selling game on the original PC Engine, so I guess they figured that people would flock to the PC effects for another game in the series, although it's completely different. Anyway, I have an even harder time playing this one. Building the blue bar at the bottom of the screen appears to have something to do with your attacks, but blue bar or no, my attacks rarely hit. The good news is that either player can choose any character now. Also, the animation is cooler and it has a lot more personality to it. In fact, it's some damn nice looking FMV but rarely do you see both characters on the screen at the same time. Once again, the PC Engine chip is used for the music and I'm almost convinced that the PCFX has an entire PC Engine built inside of it somewhere. It's too bad it's not backwards compatible. They must have really thought this was the future of gaming back then. Kind of sad. <laughs> Here's
Here's Blue Breaker. This is another RPG game, and again, I played it until I got stuck, which took about 30 minutes. Damn me and my lack of Japanese! Well, I must say that from an aesthetic point of view, this is a good looking game. It starts as most PCFX games do, with an anime intro. I like the art style of the characters here, and the animation is pretty good. After another lengthy intro and some dialogue, you're asked some questions. Of course, I just picked some random answers and the next thing I knew I was slung into battle. The battles look good and your character is super deformed and I don't have a problem with that. What I do mind is that the picture of your character on the top of the screen has no eyeballs. Did they forget or was that on purpose? And if it was on purpose, why? Battle is really strange in this game. I don't know if it was an option I turned on randomly, but it was set to auto battle. At first I was trying to input commands, but it wasn't having any of that, so I just sat back and watched. In the half hour that I played, I didn't do any wandering around, but it was automatically placed at the next story point. First I was at a bar and I chose every option I could to see what would happen. And then I was put in a cave with some enemies that were much tougher than me. I fought and died a couple of times, and then I just started running from every battle so I could try and get somewhere. I found a treasure chest and then I found the end of the cave and searched it, but nothing happened. I went back to the bar and then back to the cave again, but was stuck after trying everything I could, so I quit. I really think this would be a fun game to play if it wasn't for the damn language barrier. The music's great and so are the artwork and backgrounds. It's a shame I'm so damn old or I'd try and learn Japanese, but I'd die of old age before I could learn enough to play these RPGs. Welcome to Pia Carrot is a dating sim. These have been popular in Japan for a while. This is also the only PC effects game that I know of that has an English fan translation. Anyway, you play the role of some dude who goes to work at his dad's diner. You're surrounded by a ton of hot anime chicks and your goal is to get a girlfriend. You have a limited amount of freedom in what you do and it affects your stats. You can also control the direction of the conversation with certain people depending on if you like them or not. Fortunately, the working in the diner aspect is done automatically for you and you really only control yourself during breaks and your time off. If you tickle a girl's fancy, then you two can hook up and yes, there's plenty of nudity in this game. Well, what passes for nudity in Japan anyway. And no, I can't show you here because YouTube would probably go nuts, but if you're curious, then you've likely already seen similar images online anyway. All of the images from your encounters are saved into the system memory for you to uh, utilize later, I guess? Honestly, I feel kind of creepy playing this game. And of all the PCFX games out there, why is this the one that somebody chose to translate? I guess we know what the priority is in the PCFX community. Pick it up if you like interactive anime softcore porn. Miraculum is an RPG by Rayforce. Yeah, I haven't heard of Rayforce the developer either. They've only done a handful of RPGs and none of them left Japan. Of all the JRPGs I've played so far for the PCFX, this is the most traditional feeling of them all. There's lots of story going on here. It's done in a mix of voice acting and text bubbles. I'm sure it's a truly amazing tale that would have me glued to my chair if I could understand it. But I can't, so, oh well. I just did my best to talk to everybody so I could trigger the storyline and I was able to fumble around and find my way fairly well. The battles are all pretty bland in the way they look, but at least it's easy to guess which button command is a basic attack and which one is a special attack that drains your magic points. I guess it's magic points because the number by my stats is getting smaller every time I use it. I was pretty amazed at the few times I actually leveled up. I mean, the second time it happened, I got a 63 point jump in my hit points. That never happens! For the short time that I played this, it was fun to wander around the towns in the overworld map exploring to see what kind of trouble I could get myself into. Well, I guess I wandered a bit too far because I met a few enemies that handed out some heavy damage to my sorry ass level 3 character. He met his doom and I almost continued playing because I was actually enjoying myself listening to the decent soundtrack and exploring, but I decided not to. Something was missing, and it was me. I actually do need a bit of story to keep me interested, and since there is no fact or translation, I'll just end it right here.
All right, Dave, what are you thinking of the PCFX so far? Is that a worthy follow-up to the PC Engine? From the games that I played, no, it is not a worthy follow-up for sure. I mean, um, first and foremost, the language barrier was obviously huge for me. I, I didn't understand. So a lot you'd of probably going enjoy on. it more if you could read them. Oh, basically. of course, by all means, and of course, I don't mind some anime, you know, intros and cutscenes, but. That that they little, totally banked on them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. that was just a little overload. But, uh. Yeah, anyway, we've got more games coming up, so maybe there will be a good one in there. Let's take a look. Maybe two, I hope. Power Dolls FX is a military strategy game. You're in charge of an all-female fighting force in their mechs. The gameplay is fairly basic, but it's still fun. Select the character you want to move, and if you're within range of the enemy, you can choose how to attack. You have a bunch of different weapons to choose from, and some of these weapons can reach multiple enemies if they're all grouped close together. And as you'd expect, each side takes a turn and politely waits for the other side to finish before attacking again. The maps don't look like anything that couldn't be done on the PC Engine, but the close-up scenes of the equipment can look fairly nice. The music is also pretty good with some pumping tunes that hopefully you won't get tired of too quickly. I didn't. Raruli Rarura is a comedy adventure game. Whoa, 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 Dave. What was the name of that game again? Raruli Rarura. Raruli Rarura. Sound like Scooby Doo or something trying to say that. It starts off with a corny anime intro that has a really wacky song. <laughs> Playing the game is pretty fun. You start with a samurai character and he only has one attack right off the bat. As you explore the game world, your play will be interrupted by cutscenes here and there. There's a lot of these efforts, and they'll either further the story or you'll gain something from them. Like when I opened this treasure chest after a cutscene and now I have a sword attack. Cool! Not only is this a new attack, I can now access areas I couldn't before. You'll also gain new characters to play as, and once you free them, they'll join you. I thought it was game over for me until I figured out how I could change characters as I was pretty much stuck. As you'd guess, each character has different abilities. All of them control similarly, but they all have one really annoying feature. For some stupid reason, when you jump, you jump forward. You can't just jump straight up because, you know, that would be really helpful. Climbing this thing would have been super easy if you could jump straight up, but now it's a total chore and takes up a lot of time. This game was announced in November 1995, but wasn't released until February of 1998. You'd think that with almost two and a half years of development, they would have caught this. Oh well. The music is enjoyable for the most part, and I did laugh at some of the cutscenes as they're pretty funny. This is a decent game that'll stay forever lost with the PC FX as there's no port of it anywhere. Der Langrisser FX is a really cool strategy RPG. It's a port of the Super Famicom game of the same name, which itself is largely based on Langrisser 2 for the Mega Drive. And of course, that's the sequel to War Song on the Genesis. Being all in Japanese, this one is pretty tough to figure out. I had to play a translated version of the Super Famicom game in order to figure out the menus. Once I figured that stuff out, I was able to do well enough to get at least some footage. If you're used to games like Shining Force, you'll have to take some time to get used to this. The battles are more like military madness rather than Shining Force as you have a bunch of units rather than just one-on-one -on -one fights. This version also features some anime cutscenes and some kick-ass music. Overall, I'd say that this is a game that I'd really want to get into if I could read it, but if you want to play it in English, play the translated version on the Genesis or the Super Nintendo somehow. I do think the battle scenes look best on the Genesis, but the voice effects are pretty bad. <laughs> This is a fantastic game for the PC effects, if you can read Japanese. Now why didn't this one get a fan translation? The Last Imperial Prince is another RPG for this system. Well, it's listed as an RPG, but I felt it was more of an action RPG. 
I'm sure there's a truly fascinating story here as you start the game in the middle of the action. Some strange girl is being attacked and the chivalrous guy you are ends up helping her out. She eventually falls to a cheap shop but doesn't die and gets taken to town for the healing. I really like the way you play this game. I like that everything is on a side view and there are no overhead parts that I came across. You control your character in a real time fight. At first I was really liking how this was playing out. You fight one enemy at a time and once you defeat him the next one comes at you. All through the battle you collect gold that jumps at you from your enemies and that was fun to collect. After a bunch of battles though it started to feel very tedious. I'd kill an enemy in hopes of seeing no more appear at the edge of the screen but they just kept showing up. Each enemy type has a different attack style so you have to learn when to attack and when to dodge. The problem is you have very little reaction time so I more or less just try to anticipate their attack to catch them off guard. This would cause the enemy to block most of the time and it just got really boring. One thing I found interesting is when your main character dies and you take control of his partner. When you finally win your main character comes back to life and gains experience. It feels a little like cheating but I didn't mind. I think if the developers had tweaked the battles a bit more to make them more easy to control then this would have been a great game. Overall this was a fun experience and one of the better RPGs that I had a chance to play. Kinshin Doji Zenki FX aka Demon Print Zenki is a beat em up based on an anime, of course. You can play as a girl or what appears to be a small feral boy named Zenki. You have an attack, block, and a jump button. If you put the mode 1 switch to B then the top row of buttons can be used for special attacks. Zenki fights best at close quarters and the girl fires projectile attacks. Generally I like playing as Zenki more. There's lots of boss fights in this and there's lots of drama between everything as well. The drama actually adds to the frenetic feeling of the game and I don't usually like the talky talky stuff wedged into and in between the actual gameplay. But here it absolutely works. Sometimes a guy will run in and drop a banana which gives you some life back or a ring which will turn you into a bigger more powerful Zenki. If you're playing as a girl and get the ring then Big Zenki comes in and he does a special attack and delivers a ton of damage. The graphics are really nice. Some of the stages are fairly basic looking but that's ok because I think the style works well for the game. I really like this death train with the skeletons that keep attacking you. They go down but they don't stay down just like the red skeletons in the Castlevania game. There's lots of independently scrolling layers here and the PC effects has a ton of them and I'm glad to see them being shown off. The animation is also really cool. The music gets the job done with tunes that add to the pace and the tension. I've got to admit I was confused at first while playing this game because there's a lot of actual gameplay in action. Is this really a PC FX game? This doesn't make sense. The system had more potential than we generally see and playing this one makes me sad that we didn't see that much effort put into many other games on the platform. This is an absolute must own if you have a PC FX and the language barrier doesn't bring anything down. Oh and it's two player simultaneous too. This is Firewoman Matoi Gumi. I really don't know what this game is about but from what I can deduce you might be a teacher at an all girls school. Or you might be there just to protect them because you get into battles with some random punks that seem to come onto campus just to cause troubles. The game goes by the days of the weekend. Monday through Friday you can walk around and find activities to do like play soccer, tennis, kung fu and even sumo. These activities are really boring because you don't actually take part in them but instead you watch your character go through the motions. Once he's done he gains hit points and his rank goes up. All this is necessary to battle these thugs that randomly show up. The battles are all really weird. You input battle commands before a fight starts. One is attack and the other is maybe defense? Either way I fought a couple of battles and got my ass kicked both times. Maybe I didn't do enough training and my character is super weak. There's lots of dialogue and lots of menus. It even has GPS or as the game calls it gal positioning system and I won't share my dirty joke about that because this is a family friendly show. I really wish that I knew what was going on here so I might actually enjoy this game. But wandering around aimlessly and stupid as I'm doing here just isn't entertaining. Let me know if you played this game and what you thought. It was also released on the PlayStation if you must play this game but don't have a PC FX.
Farland Story Effects is another strategy RPG. As always, there's lots of anime since this is a PC effects game. It must have been required or something. The actual gameplay is pretty basic. It's easy enough to pick up even if you don't know the language. The battles are one-on-one, -on -one, just like Shining Force, and they require a hell of a lot more loading. Everything here is pretty average, and I can't really recommend it unless you find it for a couple of bucks. A slightly better strategy RPG is Dragon Knight 4 by NEC Avenue. This one begins with fairly well fleshed out towns and a bunch of story. There's a ton of text in this game, but since I can't read it, there's really no reason to let it waste my time. So I just speed through it like a mofo. Basically, you appear to be a 10 year old kid who goes on a quest for some reason. And since you're 10 years old, girls will disrobe when you talk to them. That always happened to me when I was 10. Once you get to the meat of the game, it's pretty easy though. The cursor is extremely twitchy. The graphics and the sound are all PC Engine quality, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, unless you paid more than a PlayStation or a Saturn cost to buy this system. Basically, it just means that this game should have been on the PC Engine. The cutscenes do contain some high color stills though. It's not a horrible game, I suppose. Chip Chan Kick is an action platform game. The introduction cussing is nothing more than a pedophile's dream intro with little girls in panties and crap like that. I really wanted to turn this game off while watching this as I felt totally disgusted by it. After getting past that crap, the actual game starts and it plays very similar to Bubble Bobble. You run around a single screen dazing enemies and then fleeing them which destroys them. The controls are simple and the game is really fun to play. Defeated enemies will leave items to grab which give you points or power ups when you collect them. There's no time limit for each round, but if you do take a long time, a little demon guy will appear and follow you around. He'll even shoot at you, so it's worth it to keep moving. Each stage is cleared once you defeat all of the enemies. Every tenth stage ends in a boss fight that's fairly entertaining. The game controls nicely, and the levels are all laid out fairly well. Touching enemies without them being stunned will take one of your lives. A life bar would have been nice, but you do have a fair amount of credits to burn through, so you can keep going for a while. I think the actual game itself is really fun and probably the best game that I played for this episode. The gameplay graphics are simple but well done and the music is pretty damn good. It was done by Hitoshi Sakamoto who's done other stuff like Gauntlet 4 and Midnight Resistance on the Genesis, as well as other things like Ogre Battle, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Gradius V. I really wish the developers would have went in a different direction as far as the story goes because what they have here is pretty disgusting. So if you ever do play this game, just skip the intro and get right to it. And finally, this is, and I need to be very careful on how I pronounce this, Nergens? Nergens? Anyway, in the opening cutscene that plays after the title screen, it appears that you were stranded and then rescued by a giant airplane. Once you're on the plane and after a lot of dialogue, you're free to wander around. This is all done digital comic style, which is kind of cool. Well, I mean, it would be if you knew the language. Hmm, I wonder what they've got under this sheet. Anyway, I just make sure to choose every single option twice before I leave an area just to progress things along. I like how you have a map so you can choose where to go on the plane. Anyway, eventually something happens and the thing they were hiding under the sheet is a secret plane for you to use to battle enemies. You take off to save the day, or maybe conquer it, I don't know. And here you go folks, this is the extent of the 3D graphics on the 32-bit PCFX system. You fly around trying to destroy the enemy in super sweet dogfighting action. Actually, it's kind of weird to control. There's lots of menus and stuff. When you finally do kill an enemy, it dies via a CG FMV cutscene, which really isn't very satisfying. While fumbling through the menus, I was able to figure out how to transform into a mech. Anyway, you have limited ammo, and once it runs out, there's really nothing for you to do other than turn off the power and stop playing. I can't figure out how to resupply myself or return to my ship via the menus. And I can't find my ship by flying around looking for it either. The graphics are less than Super Nintendo and Sega CD quality, and so is the music. Gonna have to recommend that you pass on this one. All right, there's the PCFX for you. Dave, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Which did you enjoy more, this 
or the CDI? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, God, I enjoyed this more. I'll I'll say that for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I did like some of the RPGs that I played, even though I didn't know what the hell was going on. Yeah, I enjoyed the the action of them, the graphics and whatnot. And I really liked that bubble bobble chip chan kick game that I played. Yeah, I thought that was really fun, minus the uh, total pedophile. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was more interesting than the CDI. I had a hard, uh -huh. harder time maybe finding a lot of games to play for this episode yeah. than the CDI. But uh, there are a couple of standout titles like Zanki and uh, mm -hmm. I guess Zoroigar to a lesser degree, even right. though I'm not a huge shooter fan. Um, not an overhead shooter fan, that is. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not a horrible game. No, yeah, for sure it's not a horrible game. But uh, that poor CDI, but you know, nothing. <laughs> nothing's really below that anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what are your favorite PCFX games? Uh, have you ever even heard of the system? What did you think of the system from what we showed you? Let us know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSec. Check out this PCFX game. Uh, maybe you can review it. Yeah, dude, let's play it. Let me let me play it, and then I'll see. Maybe I'll review it. Then that's a good idea. Just gotta get it loading here. Oh, surprise, surprise! An anime intro. Let's let's watch it because it. You know, if we skip yeah. the anime intro, we're skipping half the game. <laughs> right, and I will be totally lost. Yes. You got a booger in your mustache. Jesus, is this ever going to end? Title screen. About oh. time. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> oh no! All right. Dude. Okay. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, this is probably another 20 minutes. I'll, I'll see you, dude.